Okay, so we've looked at some examples where we have mutually exclusive events. They don't have any outcomes in common. Um, so how about when they do? So a non mutually exclusive event. So in this example, a student made target includes two overlapping squares. So if we look at the picture, and I know you guys are in um, black and white, it might be hard to see. Why don't you go ahead and outline? For me, you can see it's a yellow square. Just so you can clearly see um, that's one of the squares. And then the other square is the blue one. Those are the two overlapping squares and they overlap here in the middle. Assume that a sticky ball thrown at the target is equally likely to land anywhere in the target. What is the probability that the ball lands inside one or both of the squares? So one or both. For it to land in one, it could land in this only yellow section or this only blue section. Or both of the squares means this part in the middle. So essentially, what's the probability that lands inside some version of these squares. All right, so when we find, this is what we refer to as geometric probabilities. Um, it comes down to probabilities using areas. So we're gonna find the areas of a few things first, and then we will talk about how to set up our probability. So the total area, we're gonna need that in a minute. So we'll just go ahead and get that set. The total area is the area of the whole target. Inside the target, we can see we have two overlapping squares, but the area of the whole target, it's 60 centimeters long by 20 centimeters high. So 60 times 20 gets us a total area of 1200 centimeters squared. So we're gonna do a little bit of prep work. We're gonna find the area of both squares and the overlapping area. Okay, so we have square A. Square A, you can see is a 10 by 10 squared. So to find the area, we would just do 10 times 10. Well, we know 10 times 10 is 100 centimeters squared. Uh, square B is this square over here. The whole thing is 10 by 10. So we have another 100 centimeters square. And then the overlap. So the overlap is, they gave us some dimensions. This five centimeters is pointing to this part this five centimeters is pointing to this. So we have another square, five by five. So the area of the overlap, five times five is 25 centimeters squared. All right, so to find the probability when you have non-mutually exclusive events, the probability of landing square A, oops, square A, or square B is going to be equal to the probability of landing in square A plus the probability of landing in square B. But if you notice, if we do that, we've counted this middle square twice. We counted it with the A and then we counted it again with the B. But there's not two of those, there's just one of those. So what we do is we subtract out the probability of A and B of it landing in that middle square, that overlap. Okay, so the probability that it lands in square A, square A, and remember we do probabilities with areas, is 100 centimeters squared over the total 1200, so that's why we needed that 1200, plus square B has an area of 100 over the total 1200, and then we're going to subtract um, the area of A and B that was our overlap was 25 over the total area, 1200. So again, working with fractions, but all a common denominator. So we know we'll keep our 1200. 100 plus 100 minus 25 is 175. 
That will reduce to 7 48 So to sum up, the probability of it landing in A or B is 7 48 which is about equal to 15%. So similar to the, if your events are mutually exclusive, to find the probability of A or B, we just added the two events together. If your events are not mutually exclusive, you have to subtract out and overlap because otherwise you counted it here and you counted it there. I think that's a good visual to show that. So probability of non-mutually exclusive events. Here's our nice little summary. If A and B are not mutually exclusive events, then the probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. That's that overlap.